Hello and welcome back to the Hawkridge Systems video series for the five top things you need to know about Composer. This is video two and in this vid video we're going to be covering inserting 2D elements. So this really is a spin-off of the first video in the author tab uh, where we start actually inserting these 2D elements into Composer. Now we have to combine these with the transform tab as well so we'll actually start exploding this thing apart and adding some, some details to it. So let's go ahead and let's isolate the engine. Uh, if you go to assembly tab and you go to assembly selection mode, click on any assembly, it's going to select that assembly you selected. In the tree, it'll tell you what it's located under. You click on that, right click, isolate. We can go and isolate these components. All right, so now I want to uh, actually start adding some 2D elements to this. So first thing I'd wanna do is actually start exploding some components off of it. So if I were to grab, let's turn off that assembly selection mode. And if I were to grab these bolts here, let's go ahead and drag them out. And then let's go ahead and drag this guy out as well. Now, a lot of times if you want more space between them, this would be a good instance to use the linear trans transform. Again, this is a spin uh, or a continuation from the first video. And we'll just do something like that. So if you want to know how to use these tools in more detail, check out the first uh, video in this series here. Okay, let's go back to author. I'm going to make a quick view just to save my spot. And uh, let's start adding some elements here. So I'm going to take three of these bolts, and I want an exploded line to go from them back to where, where they came. In the author tab, under path, if I were to create an associative, an associative path from the neutral location, it's going to go and snap these lines back to where they came. Now, if I select the lines in the properties, I can adjust these. So I want to say that uh, they're red, uh, they're not on top, and their ending points are going to be none. And something like that, and I get these nice exploded lines that go through the model. Okay, so now if I want to do this with a polyline, which I'm going to do with that fourth one, I go to polyline, I hold down alt, I select the uh, circular edge of that bolt, keep alt held down, select the circular edge of the, where it came from, and I want to right click to end that line. Okay, now we have that line, I want to click it, and I can modify the same attributes I did before. If I hit the uh, eyedrop tool and click on one of these guys, it'll copy any properties it can. Since the uh, dash, dat, dash dash dot property is different in the polyline than it is in the exploded lines, it's, it's uh, not going to copy that. Same with the stay on top. So it will copy some of them, get you halfway there, and then you finish it off with the other uh, properties. All right, and we'll go over more properties uh, in our later video, I think video four, something like that. We dive into properties in a lot more detail. Okay, so that's a 2D element for exploded lines. Two different ways to create those. Now let's go ahead and do a label. Now I want to create a label onto this screw, and uh, you'll see that by default it's assigning my label to one of my styles. Uh, I just want to go ahead and unsubscribe that. I'm going to turn off auto, auto subscribe so it stops doing that. That way I have full control over modifying what this 2D actor is uh, pointing at. So right now it's pointing at the uh, socket head cap screw, which I want it to point at. And I want to point, I wanted to call it a string. And I'm going here and I'm going to call this, uh, we'll say, remove, uh, we'll call these bolts, um, something like that, remove bolts. So this is going to be like step one. We're going to be removing these elements here. I'm going to update my view and something like that. Okay, going back to author, let's go ahead and add a, a line, an arrow as well. And uh, actually, let's do this. Let's take this guy here. I'm going to go ahead and transform and pull this guy out to about right here, and I want to add an arrow to him. So going back to Author tab, Arrow, Alt, select this guy here, we'll drag that back. If you click on that arrow, we'll get some more options, such as the, uh, if I go to Translate, we can go and grab that, drag it back. Let's go into the properties here, let's change this to green, we'll say it doesn't stay on top, and let's turn that opacity off. That way it's a 2D arrow in 3D space. Something like that. We'll go ahead and create the uh, another view or update that view just to create a safe spot there. Okay, so now I want to add a two-dimensional vectorized image of some components in this in this uh, view here. To do that, it's kind of hidden. You go to workshops, you go to technical illustration. We got a detailed view button right here. If I click on that, 
gives me a circle. Now what I can do is I can shrink this circle and I can position it over anything I want. So for instance, I want to create a little vectorized detail view of this component that I just exploded out. I go up here and I say create, a little button right here, and it's, it's developing those vectorized lines right now. And there we go. And if it looks a little fuzzy, just because the line width is too thick, just go here in the properties under line, right there, line width. We'll turn that to one, and we'll get something like that. All right, uncheck detail, default our uh, detail view so we can exit out of there. And we got a nice little uh, example of what that looks like there. So another example of that, if I say uh, detail view, and I go ahead and grow this, and I just want some specific items in here. Let's, let's say I just want this uh, bolt, right? I have the bolt selected, and now I go ahead and let's go ahead and capture that. Because the bolt selected is the only thing that's going to appear in the de detail view here, which is really nice. So if you have a bunch of things, you don't actually have to hide them. You just select them, and because it's selected when you create it, that's what it creates. You probably want to zoom in a little bit on that guy so it's not so small. You kind of get the... Uh, the idea there. Okay, going back to the author tab, let's do, uh, well, actually the next one for a 2D element is I want to insert a digger view. Digger view is not in the author tab. It's kind of in a different location as well. Um, it, one place to find is the home tab, and that's located here. Uh, I just like to use the shortcut key, which is spacebar. So you click a spacebar, so you click in the viewport, hit the spacebar, and we get the digger tool that pops up. Now the digger tool can be used as a magnifying glass just by mousing it over components. Or you can go ahead and drag it off to the side, hit this, hit this little wrench here that pops up from these elements. We can go, uh, there's a little cross section or cross here that's actually a pointer. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky to use. You have to actually click and drag that to where you want it to go. And so you click and drag, position it where you want it to go. You can use this to zoom into elements here. And I really like the way that you can go to render mode. So I can go to mode and I can switch my render mode so it looks different on screen. I can capture that as a vectorized image. Now I can change my, ve my render mode back to the way it was and my image stays the same, which is really nice. You can be able to call out things here differently than you see it on screen. Um, if I do that again, I go to the digger tool. Let's go ahead and delete that guy just to free up some space here. And I want to drag this out, something like that. And let's go, and we're going to do a little dig into the model. There's some options here for uh, X-Ray. And uh, so this is X-Ray and Onion Skin. I really like X-Ray because you can see the ghosting of the old components that were there. Let's go ahead and resize this. Eh, maybe, maybe we'll bring it down like that. There, that's fine. And we can go ahead and ghost in. And let's go ahead and say that we want that view right there. Now, because these lines are thin, the vectorize or the rasterize view isn't going to look that nice. So before we actually rasterize that, we want to go to workshops, high resolution image. We want to go over here and change the uh, the quality of the image. So let me say 2400 by 600. So I'll just go ahead and about double that. Now when I rasterize this image, it's going to use these settings to actually create this image. Um, we just have to open that up and change it. And that way we can get a nice detailed image. Uh, that way, too, I can resize this without losing quality, right? So now we have this JPEG image in here, but it's a high-quality image, so we can actually stretch it out uh, so we, it doesn't uh, pixelate and stuff like that uh, without getting too big. Okay, um, let's go ahead and save the attachment. Uh, let's go ahead and change that to maybe a gradient tooltip, and we want that gradient to maybe be a green or something like that. I also like to go into the click on the image, go to the uh, border here. We'll change that border to green and maybe resize it a little bit just to kind of give the same attributes as that attachment. And there we go. Okay, so this is uh, video two of our five-part series, just going over exactly you know, the, the little tools and things that you need to know to be successful in Composer. This video is all about the creating the 2D um, elements. The first video in this series was about creating, um, actually exploding things apart, moving things, and then it gets into the 2D a little bit, and this is basically, basically a continuation from that. Okay, um, please watch the next video where we'll actually be going over creating views.